praise the Lord, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, as Brother James has said, our topic this morning is unity in spiritual warfare. And the text of scripture that we've been given is Joshua chapter 6, uh, from verse 1 to verse 21. Uh, let me begin reading. Now, the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its kings and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have, the seven, have seven priests carry the trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a, sh a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, march, advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. Verse eight, when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward blowing their trumpets and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. Verse 11, so he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing, blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they carried, they circled the city seven times, verse 16. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the, priest, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. And the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. Verse 20, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. The wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed the sword, destroyed with the sword, every living thing in it. Men, women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord. Uh, well, 
my brothers and sisters, uh, our topic is unity in spiritual warfare. And we are going to use this text of scripture uh, to learn lessons related to this uh, topic in the next uh, few moments. Well, when I think about the word unity, my brothers and sisters, uh, what comes to me is one, being one. Actually, the word unity is two words in one. It is one unit, you know? So unity is a state of being in full agreement, you know? Unity is, uh, is, 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 is what happens when, when you have different parts combined together and working as one unit. And the scripture demonstrates the concept of unity very well in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12 from verse four to verse six, where it says that for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though we are many, we form one body and each other belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Uh, you can see that Paul here is helping us understand the biblical concept, unity. You know, that uh, the body has different parts. Each of the parts has a different function, but they do not operate in contradiction. They complement, they collaborate, they cooperate, and at the end of the and at, at the end of the day, I mean, the body can consistently exist because though it has different parts functioning differently, they all are, I mean, they all cooperate, they all collaborate, you know, there is no contradiction. So unity simply means being of one mind, being of one purpose, regardless of the difference in the way that you are, uh, that you are gifted. And my brothers and sisters, in the scriptures, unity is well uh, demonstrated. When you look at the Godhead, when we look at the Trinity, and you see in our creeds, we, uh, in, in our creeds, especially the Nicene Creed, it is well, it is well demonstrated. There is this portion in the Nicene Creed which talks about the Son, proceeding from the Father and the Spirit, proceeding from the Father and, and the Son, you know, and together with the Father and the Son, you know, the three are worshipped and glorified. So you can see that uh, in the Trinity, the three persons in the Trinity, you know, are uh, different as they are, but one in the way that they function and in the way that uh, they, they, they operate. You know, and I was just reflecting on a few uh, examples uh, revolving around the Trinity in, in scripture. You know, in Genesis chapter one, verse 28, you can see that the scripture uh, brings out the unity in the Trinity, in the creation of a human being, you know, where it says, then God, then God said, let us, and the Amplified version puts in brackets, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image, according to our likeness, you know, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle of the field, and over everything that, uh, that has been created. So you can see the three persons in the Trinity, you know, complementing one another in creation, yeah? in the creation of the human who is the apex of God's creation, you know? They worked, the, 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 the three persons of the Trinity worked together in stopping evil, you know? In Genesis 11, verse seven, you know, the, the, the project of building the Tower of Babel was brought to a halt. And in that text of scripture, you see, it says, come, let us, Father, Son, and Spirit, go down there and confuse and mix up their language so that they will not understand each other. You see, evil was stopped, and the stopping of this evil 
took unity you know in the stopping of this evil you see the concept of unity are playing out very clearly the amplified says come let us father son and spirit go down and confuse and mix up their language now we are talking about unity in spiritual warfare my brothers and sisters if we are going to stop the advance of evil unity is paramount just the way in this scripture you see father son and spirit operate together to stop the evil project of the building of the tower of babel if we are going to stop the advance of the enemy we have no option but to operate in unity as the scripture teaches it my brothers my brothers and sisters you know there are other examples you know, the three persons of the Trinity are seen in action during the baptism in the, in, uh, during the baptism of, 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 of Christ in the Jordan, according to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, and Luke chapter 3, verse 22. You see, you can see the Son being baptized, the Spirit descending, and the Father speaking. You know, and this is what the scripture says, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, meaning Jesus, in a bodily form, and a voice came from heaven. You are my, you are my, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. So you can see how eh, at every moment, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, come into play. The, the Son is being baptized. The Spirit comes upon him, and the Father speaks. Oh, how I pray that God will cement us together, you know, as his children, so that we can accomplish the purposes of God and extend the kingdom of God and stop the advance of the enemy. One more example, there are so many, I can't, uh, I can't finish them. You know, the ministry of the son was empowered by the spirit as evidence of the kingdom of the father. According to Matthew 12, 28, Jesus said that casting out of demons by the spirit of God is evidence that the kingdom of the father has come. So you can see, even in the ministry of Jesus on earth, you know, father, son, and spirit, you know, uh, uh, father, son, and spirit are in action, you know. The son is casting out demons by the spirit and he says that this is evidence that the kingdom of the father is here. May God help us to stop competing, but to begin to complement. If we are going to push the gates of hell, you know, I like this one. The spirit is sent by the father in the name of the son. According to John chapter 14, verse, verse 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus talking about himself, in Jesus' name, he will teach you all things and bring you into remembrance all that I have said to you. You can see Father, Son, and Spirit. The Spirit is being sent by the Father in the name of the Son. Oh, what? What a demonstration of unbroken unity. I pray that God will bring us to this level in the cathedral so that we can push at the gates of, 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 of hell. And my brothers and sisters, in the context of warfare, warfare is a long-term military conflict. You know, it is not short term. It is long term. And for as long as we live, and even those who will come before, uh, who will come after us, you know, as long as the earth endures, warfare is going to be a reality. There is not going to be a time eh, when, when it will not be necessary to fight against the powers, eh, the powers of darkness until, until God, until Christ comes back to establish his kingdom. We, we will be in warfare perpetually. And may God help us to function just the way the scriptures demonstrate that the Trinity functions to put the enemy uh, where 
where he belongs. Now, let me just focus on lessons from what we have read in the book of Joshua. Well, before you come to Joshua chapter six, my brothers and six sisters, you need to read the last, the last portion of Joshua chapter five. You know, in the last scriptures, in the last verses in Joshua chapter five, the Bible says that when Joshua was near Jericho, he lifted his eyes and he saw a man with a drawn sword. And he asked, are you for us or for our enemies? And the man says, neither, but as captain of the Lord's host, as commander in chief, I have now come. And what happens? Joshua submits to the commander in chief a sign that is aligning himself, uniting himself with the commander in chief, uniting himself with the agenda of the commander in chief. Maybe Joshua had an idea of how battles should be fought. You see, Joshua had been serving under Moses, and during the reign of Moses, there were a number of battles that were engaged in. There, were the, there was the battle against the Amalekites and others as they journeyed through the wilderness towards the promised land and he could have drawn from past experience like most of us have a lot of experience especially some of us who have stayed long in salvation you keep drawing from past experience but Joshua left past experience and aligned himself with the commander in chief you can see the concept of unity here if we are going to fight any battle and succeed in a spiritual battle we must be un we must be united to the commander in chief we must be aligned to the commander in chief we cannot bring our experience into spiritual battles every spiritual battle has a different dimension it has a different approach when you read the scriptures you see clearly that God does not duplicate approaches, you know. God has a new approach to, to put the enemy where he belongs every time and every moment. We need to be in unity with the commander-in-chief, like Joshua submitted to the captain of the Lord's host. He put off his shoes. In the scripture, whenever people put off their shoes, it was they were surrendering their will, surrendering their right. Joshua was surrendering his right to lead and submitting to the leadership of the commander of the Lord's host. Commander in chief, we can at every moment we must say, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? How do we do this? The horde of evil in the land requires us to submit to the commander in chief for a strategy. Now, when you go to Joshua chapter six, after he surrenders, now the commander in chief starts talking. The commander in chief starts talking. You will have no right to engage in warfare until the commander in chief starts talking. You know, you know, the commander in chief starts talking to Joshua and he gives Joshua specific instructions. You know, he tells Joshua how to go about, you know, with this battle around Jericho, you know, and the unity within unity, the concept of submission is very important. You see, that's why the scripture says in a marriage setting, he says, submit one to another in the Lord. You cannot operate in unity unless you are submitted. Submission is one of the tests that you're united, that you're uniting with the person you're submitting to. If there is a pride and arrogance that happens many times in prayer groups, you are just wasting time, you cannot win spiritual battles. There must be submission one to another. You know, so Joshua submits to the captain of the Lord's host. He takes every word, he takes every word seriously. You see, even in the natural sense of warfare, you know, when the commander in chief gives instructions, you know, you know, the people, the, 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 the
uh, just or uh, just moving away just from one word that has been that has been given by by the commander uh, or, or, uh, by the commander in chief can cause uh, uh, can cost okay? can cost but no it can cost you for that i'm just getting uh, someone calling but uh, i have that yeah so uh, joshua listens to the instructions chief Sorry, brother. Um, I'm using my phone and someone. Uh, yeah, let. Let me just continue. So after Joshua, well, after Joshua gets uh, the instructions, he passes on the instructions uh, to the uh, to the army. It passes the instruction to the uh, to the armies, uh, and you can see that among the children of Israel, there are different sections of people who are going to be involved in battle uh, to take over Jericho. You can see that uh, they are priests. Uh, you can see that uh, they are. Carry uh, to blow trumpets. Then you can see that there are also uh, people, and there are also an. Each one of these different has a position, a particular position. Uh, God has deployed them, and so the other thing that I see out of this story of Joshua is that. Each one has a position where God has put them. You can function well where God has put you. And that is a very important concept when we are talking about unity in spiritual warfare. Everyone has a place God has gifted them to operate at. You know, there were priests that were called to carry the ark. There were priests that were called to blow the trumpet. Then there were armies, you know, and then there were the people. Now, there was a section of the army that was supposed to be in front and another section that was supposed to be behind. So everyone stood in their designated position. You see, you can, brethren, you can look at the human body. The hand cannot be where the leg is. And the the head cannot be which uh, individual must be in the place where God has placed, where where God has has designed for them to operate. And you can see this uh, very prominently in this uh, uh, battle. Uh, against uh, against against Jericho, and so you can see as you go ahead in Scripture, uh, you can see that uh, there was also uh, following God's instructions. You know, Joshua shared the instructions of God uh, with the people, and the people believed Joshua. Now that is very important uh, for spiritual warfare to be successful. The leader must be believable. The leader must have come to a place where people trust and believe him. You know, you must have built such a testimony that the people trust you. When you read about Joshua, especially after the crossing of the Jordan, the Bible says the people honored Joshua and believed him all the days of his life. And God told Joshua, I am going to exalt you among the people 
so that the people will be willing to follow you. Now, for spiritual warfare to be effective, eh, the leadership must build such a testimony that people willingly follow you. You don't have to force people to do anything. You need to come to a place where the fruit of your life and your ministry speaks for itself so loudly that people willingly follow you. Otherwise, if you are in a leadership position and people do not trust you, they do not believe what you're saying, then it's going to be disaster at the battlefront. And so may God help all of us who are in leadership positions, maybe in church or in different places, you know, may God help us to, to come to a place like Joshua where people believe us and are willing to follow us. People should follow you because they want to, not because they have to. And so my brothers and sisters, you can see that. You can see that. There, in this battle against Jericho, there was unity of command. Every word Joshua spoke, there was no one, there was not, no one debating against it. There was unity of direction. You cannot see uncoordinated movement of groups. When Joshua woke up in the morning and said, we are going to move around the city, you cannot see in the scriptures evidence that other people moved in the opposite direction. There was unity of direction, unity of command, unity of direction, unity of purpose. Everybody, eh? you know, everybody was consumed by one purpose, the fall of Jericho, the fall of Jericho. They were not thinking about the resources they would get, but the fall of Jericho. So there was unity of purpose. And then there was unity of action. You don't see some people doing one thing and other people doing another thing. You know, there was unity of action. When it was time to walk around the city once every day, they all did the same thing, walked around the city once. You know, they went back to their dwelling place, they woke up the, the next morning, did the same thing. When it came to the last day, when they were supposed to walk around the city seven times, they did it, you know, uh, there was unity of action. There was no contradiction. And we need to pray that God will deliver us, you know, uh, from having things that cause us eh, to, to, to operate like troops that are uncoordinated. You know, the troops that are uncoordinated. Just a few things before I bring this, uh, this, this sharing to, to, to a close. You know, the ark, the ark was in their midst. The ark was in their midst. The ark is a symbol, a symbol of the presence of God. If we are going to win spiritual battles, God must be in our midst. We must create an atmosphere that makes God comfortable to be among us. I think one of the of, of the of the uh, third portions in Scripture is in the book of of First Samuel. You know, when the ark of God was brought in the camp and there was a loud shout. And the, the Philistines had, and they were scared about, uh, about a God coming in the camp. But again, the Philistines came, attacked Israel, took away the ark, and slaughtered many, many, uh, many children of Israel. You know, you know, the ark was in their midst, but God was not there. And you see, sometimes, brethren, that is what happens. Eh? You know, especially when we are so uh, we are so used to things of god you know there are times you think that god is among you and god is not among you that is dangerous eh? the ark of the lord's presence should be among us within the ark there was there were three things 
Aaron's rod that budded flowers, symbolic of God's power and authority. You know, the, 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 the tablets of the commandments, symbolic of the word of God. You know, and then uh, the manna, that, uh, a portion of the manna uh, that they, they used to feed on in the wilderness, symbolic of divine provision and sustenance. So my brothers and sisters, for us to be victorious in spiritual battles, you know, we need to be one with God. As much as we need to be one with one another in terms of purpose and in terms of action, we need to be one with God. We need to agree. Eh? We need to agree to create an atmosphere for God to be in our midst. That is very, very important if we are going to win uh, these uh, spiritual battles. Then I think about the trumpet. The trumpets, that's another symbol. When you read through scripture, what does the trumpet signify? Every time the trumpet was blown, it was a symbol of a certain season. It was a symbol of a certain strategic time. We need to align with the times and seasons of God for us to win spiritual battles. Not just alignment with God, but alignment with his times and his seasons. And my brothers and sisters, you can see yeah, that because of unity of command, unity of direction, unity of purpose, unity of action, Agreeing to create an atmosphere for God to be in their midst and moving in the times and the seasons of God, the walls of Jericho came down. And even as we uh, prepare to get into the day, we are asking that the Lord will cause us to be united with him and to be united with one another. In John 17, Jesus prayed for the church. He prayed for the believers. He said that they may be one, just as the Father and Jesus are one. Unity is critical for our success as believers in building the kingdom of God and pushing the gates of hell away. May God help us even as we get into the day. May he by his spirit cause us to be one with him and one with another, one with one another. May God by his spirit cause the walls that divide us to fall down. Scripture says that he's the one who removes the dividing wall of hostility and makes the two one. May the dividing walls of hostility come down so that we may be united with him and one another, and so that we may win the battles against the world, the flesh, and the devil. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we pray this morning, Lord, that your spirit will minister to us, that Lord, you will bring us into oneness with you, and oneness with one another, my Father and my God, that the walls, the powers of darkness, the strongholds, the principalities, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places will come down, even as we learn from your word, even as we learn from this text of scripture, uh, talking about Joshua in his battle that brought Jericho down. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dan. Amen. Amen. Let's just continue uh, to. Amen. To, let's continue in prayer. And uh, uh, friends, um, there is a clear message to us at all saints that we are in battle, but there's disunity. 
And some of us who are on this prayer call are participants in the disunity. Now may God have mercy that if you are such a person that you align yourself to the will and purpose of God. Uh, you don't put yourself where God has not uh, put you. Don't assign yourself roles that God has not uh, assigned. Uh, and and, and the, the purpose was for the walls of Jericho to come down. The purpose was not to promote any person or to demote any person. And so Lord, now I pray really coming with, uh, uh, with remorse and asking for your mercy that Lord, there's disunity in our camp at all sins. Yet the battle is real, but we are focusing on that which is not your purpose. I pray Lord that you may have mercy. I pray, Lord, that you cause alignment. Lord, that we will willingly choose uh, to submit and align with you and with your purpose. And Lord, I pray that for any who is stubborn and not willing to align, Lord, that you will uh, put them aside so that uh, we don't suffer. The whole body does not suffer because of the disobedience of, 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 of one. In his name, I have prayed. Um, uh, at the end, Daniel talked about understanding the the the, 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 the seasons, and the times. Um, and, uh, and uh, now, Lord, I pray that even here at All Saints will understand the seasons, your season and your time, and know what to do. Lord, that we shall not be like in the past when your season has bypassed and we still held on to what you've already left behind. Lord, I pray also that we'll understand the season and time for our nation, Uganda. And Lord, that we will pray that your perfect will comes to pass. Especially, Lord, this morning, I pray that the transition at the highest level of uh, leadership of our country, Lord, that your perfect will and purpose for Uganda comes to pass. Lord, I pray that you will thwart every imposter, every self-seeker, every person that will uh, drag Uganda uh, backwards, uh, that will drag Uganda deeper into the things we want to come away from. Lord, that you will stop them, stop them, stop them, stop them. Lord, some have become uh, self-confident. Now today, I pray that you deflate their self-confidence because your hand is on Uganda and there's a purpose you have for it. Lord, your hand is on all saints and there's a purpose that you have called all saints for, even at a time like this. And so every self-seeker, Lord, you uh, rebuke them, rebuke them, rebuke them, even as Joshua was rebuked and uh, he had to align himself uh, uh, with your purpose. Lord God, that you will be the commander of this battle that we are in, this war that we are in. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And now finally, I just pray uh, that may God truly be in the middle, at the center of everything uh, we do. Lord, that you be at the center of our life, that even as we come in prayer, Lord, that we indeed truly come to worship you. Lord, even as we conduct ministry, to know that you are the master, you are the Lord, and we are your servants. And so, Lord, uh, you be at the center uh, of everything. 
that we do. Lord, even as uh, uh, the ladies organize Alabaster and the men organize the conference, the prayer conference, Lord, I pray that you be at the center of these efforts, even as the clergy continue to congregate in uh, Ndeje. Lord, I pray that you be at the center uh, of this, living in, 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 in the diocese of Luero. Lord, that you be at the center uh, of the matter. We've had two times uh, when we have, um, we've been a laughing stock. And now, Lord, I pray that you will arise like a warrior arising up from sleep and, and, uh, and, 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 and cause uh, the self-seekers of Luero uh, to take up in flight. And Lord, come and take charge of that diocese and impose your will and purpose on that diocese. Lord, those who are seeking the will of tradition uh, of men, Lord, I pray that that comes to naught in the name of Jesus. Those who are seeking uh, just uh, self-glory that comes to naught in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I pray that you uh, will uh, uh, cause a final solution uh, to the issue in Luero. Lord, that it will be finalized this time around. It will be finalized to your praise and glory. And now, Lord, we commit ourselves uh, into your hands. Thank you for our brother who has shared your word. I pray, Lord, that your hand will be upon him, refresh him and his wife. Yes, refresh his family. Lord, we pray that you refresh us all and may you protect us all and may you cause us to prosper as we face this day. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. 